I think one of the things we tried to do with the council we put together was to try to focus on the positive opportunities associated with uh, growing up. And, uh, and I think in many ways the recommendations that came out of the work of uh, the group that was chaired by Secretary Sutters and by Eileen Connors is, is indicative of that. One of the recommendations coming out of this work that was done by uh, our council was an approach to try to determine ways in which we could make it even more robust to work with communities, provide them with support, technical assistance, and funding to help them make their communities better and stronger uh, and more accommodating places for people as they grow older. We also incorporated a significant amount of funding into two housing bond bills so that we could build or preserve senior housing. Hopefully, as we grow older and able to live independently, um, we can live in a place that we call home and that we feel connected to. Um, and that we still have contributions to make, not just from the past, but from the present and from the tomorrows to come. Um, the, the Council's first year of work is providing a, a roadmap to ensure Massachusetts is creating a state that supports all of our residents, both now and as they grow older. It was the personal stories, particularly by older adults, that motivated our work. We were deeply affected by their candor, their worries, and their hope. Whether it was the woman in Pittsfield who spoke about the importance of interge intergenerational program to strengthen the bonds of the community and to decrease isolation, or the many who spoke about the need for affordable housing and wanting to stay in their familiar communities if they couldn't stay in their home home, at least within their own communities. Each person graced us with their wisdom their thoughts, and their experiences, giving shape to the blueprint. The blueprint identified 10 initial priorities, of which we can already declare victory on one, which is to declare Massachusetts as an age-friendly state. In the state of the Commonwealth speech this year, some of you may be aware of this, Governor Baker announced that Massachusetts joined the network of AARP age-friendly states and the World Health Organization global network of age-friendly cities and communities. Massachusetts is only the second state in the country to do so uh, after New York. AARP's age-friendly network adds for commitment from the same state elected leadership seeking to actively work to making this a great place to live for people of all ages. Governor, we certainly recognize the commitment you've made to those 50 plus and in particular for your willingness to lead.